smart, intelligent. You guys were all of that. Execution. 50-50 ball. 50-50 ball. <laughs> First Big Ten win against the top ten team on the road in 12 years at Illinois. And you guys just did that. Proper rest, preparation, and we'll get ready for the next one. Oh, great, great job, man. Uh, you should be proud as heck. Hold your head up. Uh, that's a big time win. Mully and Hall, Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score, that's Brad Underwood talking to his team. There was a lot of mic'd up coaching going on. Everybody watching the XFL, huh? Yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> that was something last night to watch. Yeah, it was something special. Let's... Uh, Let's bring in Kendall Gill, the Bulls analyst and a member of the Flying Illini, of course. And Kendall joins us on the El Pomani Ford Hotline, El Pomani Ford in Melrose Park. Hey, Kendall, how are you? Good morning, Kendall. All right, how you guys doing? We're doing well, and it was good to see the Illini get a victory. And, uh, you know, obviously with Thio out, it's been difficult, and they've uh, suffered some losses. But to go into Penn State and to get that done, that uh, – that was very impressive, sixty-two fifty-six. What uh, was your takeaway? Well, um, their resilience because you know they lost four in a row. I O B and now he comes back yesterday, and then you know this is that, that that game yesterday was a battle. I mean, Penn State was trying to come back, and every time they made a run, Illinois would step up and in the run. And you know, I'm glad that they won that game yesterday because as you just heard Brad Underwood say, it's a top 10 team that they beat. Illinois just fell out of the top 25 this uh, weekend. And now I believe next weekend when the, when the rankings come out, if they, if I don't know if they have another game this week or not, but if they, if they do and they win that game, I think that they're right back in the top 25 after going on the road and beating a, a top 10 team. Um, you know that this this was a huge win, not only for uh, getting into the NCAA tournament, but you know for the program as well. I mean, you know, you got a lot of high school kids out there watching Illinois play again, and uh, you know when you when you have wins like this, I mean, it, it really bodes well for the program. Io Desumu hits another dagger with 16 seconds left. Kendall, he has made a habit of hitting big shots when Illini need him to do that. He's a guy that is, you know, from Chicago. He, we talked on Friday about the pipeline from Chicago to Champaign kind of being repaved again. He's clutch. Who does he remind you of? Does he remind you of anybody past or present in the NBA, in college basketball, because he is a special player? I'm going to take you back with this one, but Michael Ray Richardson. Wow, you, you, you guys remember one. him? Yeah, yeah, of course. Sugar Ray, right? Yeah, Sugar Ray. Yeah. yeah, he he reminds me of him. Both six four, both long and rangy, and, and can get to the rim. Um, he can also and, and and what Io has done this year is he's really improved his jump shot. You saw him a couple times just raise up with confidence yesterday, especially in the second half and knock down those shots. That that lets you know that he's really starting to improve. It's, it's like no hesitation in the game. And, you know, he's becoming Kiara Cedric, the closer now, because he's closing guys out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to be called Kiara, but whatever. <laughs> hey, uh, no, 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 just man, he's the closer. I, I like the closer, man. <laughs> uh, I, I was telling David, I was walking down the street um, uh, earlier in the week, or over the weekend, rather, walking down Michigan Avenue, and this guy walks out. I take a look at it, and I'm like, oh, my God, Magic Johnson just walked out of that hotel, and he's jumping <laughs> in a car. And it was, it was like, really cool because part of me was like, I started to almost, like, yell to him, like, Magic, oh, and then I realized, oh, I really don't know you. Um, but you do know him, and you did go to his party, and you did get to hang with a lot of these uh, – a lot of these guys during the uh, the All Star uh, weekend, a pretty spectacular show for Chicago. Absolutely, and, and you know I think that the city did a tremendous job in hosting the All Star event. Did a tremendous job with um, honoring David Stern as well as Kobe Bryant, and you know I talked to a lot of the people from the NBA. And they said that this is possibly one of the better All Star games that they've had, because despite the cold, but the city is beautiful, um, and even though Chicago is a big city, 
everything is right here. You know, it's like not like like if you're out in L.A., you got to go all over the place. Or right. if you're in New York, it's really congested. We have the venues. We have it was easy to get around. Uh, the people were great. So, um, you know, and, and this is coming from NBA personnel. I mean, they they like really really enjoyed being here. Kendall, I think one of the questions that you, you come out of the All Star Weekend with because the Bulls uh, returned to practice yesterday, they get back on the floor tomorrow night, but you, you wonder how can they make that organization seem as cool as the basketball city that we just saw Chicago can be and is known as because, boy, the way Common narrated that, that video, it made Chicago seem like a destination that any free agent and anybody in the NBA would want, want to be. Yeah, it, you know, um, well, we, we, hopefully a lot of free agents saw that. And, uh, and you know, what, one thing that, that I would tell the free agents who, if they're looking at this as a destination is, l- listen, man, the, if you win in Chicago, these are some of the best fans ever. I mean, and you look at it now, I mean, even when the team is, is we're not having a season that we, we thought we were having, the, the fan support is still there. So, you know, we have diehard fans here. Uh, you know, if, if a free agent comes here, we still have, I believe we still have the foundation of a young, good team for in, in, in the future. Uh, and, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, Common, Common did a great job with, uh, with honoring Chicago and everything. Only one thing that I didn't like. He said, KG, and he put Kevin Garnett up there. <laughs> and, and Kevin Garnett doesn't claim Chicago; he claims South Carolina. Yeah, he went. He, to, you know, he right. went to Farragut for a year. You right. know, and he doesn't. He doesn't claim Chicago at all. So I would, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have put Kevin Garnett in the, in the uh, thing that they come and did. Um, when we talk about you know Chicago and basketball and and the whole uh, All Star experience, I thought that the rules to the game itself were difficult to understand when they were first kind of explained and you thought like, yeah, that, what? 24? Yeah. I mean, how, how is that going to work? Well, it yeah. turned out to be spectacular. That fourth quarter or whatever, that fourth game, whatever you want to call it, that was absolutely sensational, riveting, back and forth, you know, no commercials. You're sitting there watching it. I, I just couldn't believe how good it got. Yeah, and and the guys were competing for real. And the way yeah. you, I was looking at Joel and Bead, he was full. He was full of sweat, man. Like <laughs> you know, and I'm looking at Giannis Antetokounmpo making the blocks on LeBron, and then Chris Paul, and then all those guys are diving on the floor. Well, we, we've never really seen that in a NBA All Star game. And you know, they're competing at the highest level. And then you know, what 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 I liked was the intrigue. Who's going to take the last shot? especially for Team LeBron, because you saw James Harden try to do it. He couldn't do it. You saw LeBron try to do it. Then you give it to Anthony Davis. Oh, Anthony Davis is from Chicago, so it's great that he closes <laughs> out the game. You know, so it was a lot of it was a lot of drama back and forth. And I, I say and, and, and the dunk contest, oh my God, I think that's the best dunk contest since uh MJ and Dominique. I still think that um uh my man Gordon got robbed because <laughs> You know, D Wade D Wade gives his, his guy in Miami the the dunk contest by giving him a, uh, by giving Gordon yep. a nine for jumping over Taco. Yep. Come on, D Wade. <laughs> you know, I got to talk to him about that the next time I see him. Kendall, with twenty seven Bulls games left, I mean, obviously it's kind of a, a slog of of the season so far, and and I don't know what will change in that given the schedule. When, when you see the reports and and you hear the conversations about real change coming to the front office and, and why that is necessary and, and how likely that is. What goes through your mind and how realistic do you think it is to expect real change from the Bulls? Well, I, I really don't know. I'm, I don't, um, you know, I, I know that there were a lot of rumors, as you just said, about real changes coming. I, I don't know whether that's going to happen or not, but, you know, I know that real change has to come with the play. Um, you, you know, and that starts one with the coaching staff, and, and and two with the players. I think if the Bulls can get healthy, um, and get all their players back, this is when you look at it. This is like two years in a row that we've been decimated by injury. Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, if they can get all their players back and, and everybody was healthy, I don't think we would even be having this uh, this conversation. Um, but that's what happens when, when, when you have a disappointing season. And uh, But hopefully in the sake with 27 games left to go, they can get some of their guys back. I, what, what are they, four and a half out of out of the eighth spot? Mm. I, I believe four, four and a half or five, something like that. Um, and hopefully if they make a run, then all this talk, you know, goes away. Uh, you know, hopefully Zach continues to play well. Larry comes back and 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 shows us the promise that he that he's shown in spurts. Uh, and then also that Otto Porter comes back. I think that Otto Porter was the X factor. You know, from last season, I thought said if this guy plays well, Larry just plays like Larry, and then Zach has an All Star caliber season, and then then the Bulls do really well and they get in the playoffs, but. Otto Porter hasn't been in since the beginning of the season. So, you know, that's that's what's going on. And if those guys can get back and they make a run, then we're all happy in April, especially me, because now, you know, I get to play off money. And, you know, I get to take my <laughs> wife and kids on a nice vacation. Uh, you know. Beautiful. So, you know, well, hopefully that happens. <laughs> well, I guess Wendell Carter Jr. practiced, so did Otto Porter. Uh, Carter might be ahead of Porter, but at least they're practicing – Marketing still might be a week or two away, but he's closing in on it. I think he's it was four to six, and it's now four with Carter. It's six, but both of them were four to six. So I, you know, I think that we are going to see them at some point get healthy. I, I don't know about Chris Dunn, but um, it seems like it's pretty good a possibility that they can at least get back to some sort of uh, strength, if not full strength. Yeah, because you know, I. <laughs> I agree with 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 Pax, the statement that he made last um, last I, I believe it was two weeks ago when he said we don't really know what we have yet you know and then they don't because no they haven't been together on the court healthy for a number of games and I think we have to wait until we see what we have and you know then we can make a a, a pretty good judgment on what course of action we need to take so. Uh, hopefully those guys get back so so that we can find out. I think that, that if you see what you have, if all those guys are healthy and they're clicking, then we have a, a pretty good team. Kendall, thanks a ton. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Kendall. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Hey there, Galaxy fans. Switch to Sprint and get both an unlimited plan and the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus included for just $35 per month per line for five lines. All you need is approved credit and an 18-month lease. No trade-in required. Visit a Sprint store, Sprint.com, or call 800-SPRINT-1. S10 Plus, 128 gigabytes after 2667 per month credit. Apply within two bills. If canceled early, remaining balance due. Unlimited basic after 131.21. Pay $32 per month per line without auto pay. Coverage and offer not available everywhere. Excludes taxes, fees, and roaming speed. Maximums use rules. $30 activation fee and restrictions apply. 